Welcome back. I'm Dr. Laura Murillo, President and CEO of the Houston Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. With us today, we've got a great friend of the Houston Hispanic Chamber. He has been so very active, very engaged, and he's met with our members and met with our board and always picks up the phone and, and makes sure that he touches base with us. And anytime we've needed to talk to him, he's made himself available. I'm talking about none other than Congressman Pete Olson. Thanks for joining us. I'm thrilled to be chatting with y'all about America's most populated and most diverse congressional district, Texas 22. Yes. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about this third quarter. Give us some good news. You know, we've got small business owners out there that need more federal funding. Give us some good news. Get some money down here in Houston. Work with your colleagues. Let's make this happen. I hear a lot of clear as you know, we've had a rough time with COVID-19. It started in the middle of the first quarter, rough quarter, second quarter is even worse. The third quarter nationally was great. I mean, we recovered 33.1% increase in GDP, the largest ever with the poor quarter before. But sadly, a lot of that didn't quite hit home. We're doing okay, but we've got some bright spots in Texas 22. For example, Amazon.com, as you know, has opened three high-tech centers to distribute their products. One's open in Pearland, Texas, what will be open in Richmond, Texas this year, about next year, probably 20, February of 2021. And it just announced this week, so another one will be built in Missouri City. And at the state of the Manville City Hall, the city, the, the mayor's address, amazing numbers. She said this year, all the quarters combined, sales tax revenue has been up with the pandemic as opposed, as opposed to last year without the pandemic. That's huge. But we know we're losing lots of jobs. It's impacting minorities, Hispanics, African Americans more than others. We've got to find out why that's happening. I wish I had good news. We've been pushing, pushing. One thing people said, great program, the payroll protection program, the PPP, that's awesome. It's out of money. It goes to fund, it goes black on December 31st. We're trying to get that restarted, refunded. But sadly, it's got gridlocked in D.C., blocked, blocked, blocked. Political parties play political games, and that's got to stop. These are businesses. These are lives. This is a pandemic flu. Let's come together work as Texans always do. Congressman, let's talk about some of the great things that happened this year, including NAFTA, the redesign of that, which will have some great impact here in our region in Texas. Well, NAFTA was great for Texans for America, but NAFTA was 30 years old, had to be updated, USMCA does that in a big, big, big way. For example, what they're excited about is right now, our energy prices are controlled by a group known as OPEC. They're mostly led by Saudi Arabia. My entire lifetime, they control our prices, the pump, and the cost for our electricity because they control our energy. The new USMCA, for the first time ever, addresses energy between three exporting countries, Mexico, Canada, and America. My vision is this USMCA will not stop there. It will make what's called, I like to call, NAPEC, North American Petroleum Exporting Countries. NAPEC, NAPEC, NAPEC. We can have a global market for energy, make sure we control our prices, and that's just one aspect. But the big thing for back home is all these trade routes coming from Mexico, there are four big ports for energy, San Diego, California, and three in Texas, El Paso, Laredo, and the Rio Grande Valley. Interstate 69 is being built in the Rio Grande Valley. It comes into three places, Brownsville, Harlingen, and Mission. They come together by the Alfurias and come basically right up the, the uh, Highway 59 corridor to Houston, Texas, and our great ports. They will come about a mile from my home in Chicago, Texas. That's more trade between our countries, more jobs for Houston, more jobs for Mexico, more jobs across the world, more freedom, more freedom, more freedom. It's a great deal. I was proud to support it then. I'll always support it because, again, that's what America should do. Work with allies and neighbors we trust, we love, like Mexico and Canada, and make the world a better place. Absolutely. And that's why the Houston Hispanic Chamber of Commerce advocated for USMCA. And while we don't endorse candidates, we support and endorse and advocate for issues. That was a big one for our region. Thank you for your support. Another is small business. We need a second stimulus package. What can you tell us about that? As I mentioned earlier, we had a great project that people love, part of the whole economic stimulus bill called the Payroll Protection Program, the PPP. 
that say the law of small business from, businesses from shutting down. It's about to lose all of its funding uh, on December 31st, so less than three weeks away. Of course, DC gridlock has stopped that, stopped that, stopped that. And so we're trying to find ways to get that started and ways to help out. I don't know bill, it's called, uh, it's bill HR 8620, the Business Preparing for Better Times Act, which basically encourages and helps businesses prepare themselves for epi epidemic viruses like the COVID virus, gives them training resources so their employees can work in a safe environment, protect their clients, and also, again, push, push, push. And one thing I'm proud of, just like all of y'all have done, we've helped our local small businesses in this crisis dramatically. As I mentioned earlier, Manville, Texas, their sales tax revenue went up during the pandemic as composed to last year without the pandemic. That's because people stayed home and bought local. And we absolutely uh, support small business and that's how we have been advocating for the support. The other good news, it seems, and we'll know soon, is the Latino Museum in Washington, D.C. Long overdue, your chamber has been involved in those conversations for years with Eduardo Rodriguez and others. Uh, talk to us about that and, and what people can uh, expect if they don't know much about this. Well, they can expect just to see what America has done for all citizens of different races and groups before on their service to America. Hispanic Americans have built America in Texas since the get-go. In fact, the term Hispanic comes from Hispaniola, where the Spanish conquistadors came to America. We've had them in our country since we started, and they make a great contribution. One example from Texas 22, an army veteran from World War II, they Marcario Garcia. Marcario was born in Mexico, came across legally with his family in like 1936. World War II happened, he volunteered to fight in Europe. He's pinned down there in Germany in 1944, earns America's highest award, the Bell of Honor, presented to him by Harry Truman in person in the White House in 1945. In fact, he was such a hero Mexico gave him their highest honor too. The, their biggest medal, like our Medal of Honor, one person in the world's history has won those two medals, and that's a person from Fort Bend County, Texas, Chihuahua, Texas, Marconi Garcia. And that's just one example of what Hispanics have done for America. So please, this bill, come to DC and say, I love Hispanics because they love America. They're part of our whole interwoven races, that religions, they make our country so great. So I'm so thrilled, excited that we're going to be here in D.C. to celebrate Hispanic heritage, not just for a month, for years and years and years until America no longer exists and God's called us all home. Well, as I like to say, as goes Hispanics, so goes Houston. Congressman, thank you for all you do. Wishing you very happy holiday season. See you very soon.